let's talk about how to pass Nestlé's video interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job Ready English, here to help you get hired. Today we're going to be talking about the fast moving consumer goods company Nestlé who make so, so many tasty things. And we're going to be talking to you about how you can pass their video interview. In this video we're going to go through what you can expect from their recruitment process, the most common interview questions that we came across from publicly available sources that candidates reported in the past six months, and other questions we came across which we thought were interesting and we deal with in a rapid fire round. As ever, if you want more help to help you pass the Nestle video interview, check out our Pass the Interview Pack down in the description below. Let's get started. So in Nestle's recruitment process, you can expect it to take about two to three months for the application and online tests you're asked to submit your CV and a cover letter, you'll then do some situational tests and will also provide a video interview. After that you'll be asked to attend the assessment centre which candidates reported to be a rigorous whole day experience including a group and individual case study and then preparing a spontaneous presentation and finally a final interview. So we picked out five most common questions for Nestle that candidates reported being asked multiple times so it seems much more likely that you're going to get asked these questions in your video interview. Question number one, why Nestle? So if you want a really in-depth video about how to answer why this company, check out the card up in the top right hand corner where we break this down and also provide you with a free worksheet. Now we couldn't find out the timings for these questions so we're going to assume that you get two minutes to answer this question. In that you should include five facts about the company. Now these facts should be unique i.e. you couldn't say them about any other company and as specific as possible whether it be about revenue, whether it be about their products, corporate social responsibility, recent news, projects that are going on. One thing I would say is try to steer away from negative news, something uh, that gets asked to me quite a few times. People say like, oh, should I talk about bad news? Well, no, because <laughs> that's probably not what the company wants to talk about. And if you can, try and relate one or two things about the company to yourself personally. Maybe you really enjoyed one of those products growing up for example I can remember going to my grandma's house in Paris and one of the things I really enjoyed was drinking Nesquik something that I always really looked forward to um, or it could be something that they're doing that means something to you like a volunteering project somewhere that they're giving money to charity or donating people's hours but if you give a sort of personal slant to it otherwise they tend to find when you're answering this question just reading out facts just kind of sounds like a shopping list about the company Question two, why do you want to do this job role? Again, if you want an in-depth answer into how to answer this question and a free worksheet, check out the card up in the top right hand corner. So when you're answering why this role, this is a two part answer. Part number one, you're going to want to talk about what are the day-to-day -day responsibilities, what are the things that you would need to do in this job. And part number two, you're going to want to talk about yourself and the skills that you have that would be good for this job. All of these things you can find from the job description. Now save yourself from thinking, why do I need to talk about a job that's being advertised, surely they should know that. The point of answering the question this way is to show that you understand what I would be doing and what I would need to be good at this job. That way the company is going to know that you really understand what it is that you're going to be doing on the job. Because I don't know about you guys, but there are plenty of times when I've applied for jobs and I can't really remember what I applied to. Question number three, what are your strengths? So if you had two minutes to answer this question, I reckon you could fit in three or four strengths. Now importantly, the strengths shouldn't just be random strengths that you think yourself like, uh, I'm a really good football player or um, I'm really good at video games. It should be stuff that's related to the job that you are applying for and you can find that from the job description. They're going to have the skills that they wanted, they may even have like, oh if you have these skills or these experiences then that would be a bonus So make sure that you include these in your answer. And I say four because you're going to want to demonstrate the skill, so you're going to say well I'm really strategically minded and then you'll want to give the experience which shows why I'm really strategically minded because I have owned or managed businesses for the past 10 years. 
for example. So what that does is it's not just your opinion anymore, you're sharing your experience and the things that you've done to demonstrate that you have that strength. Doesn't matter which strengths you pick from the list, but I do suggest you pick strengths that come from the job description. Question number four, what is your most recent achievement? Now I quite like this question. It's a little bit different and it seems to come up quite a lot. Now this for me, when people talk about achievements, I tend to like to think about what's something where you've really had to kind of just grind it out to get something done. So something that's been a recent achievement for us as a business is we put together something that we're super proud of, which is coming out soon, which is called the Anxiety Workbook. So the team came together and thought about writing a product because we deal with a lot of students and graduates and a lot of them have spoken to us about how they feel anxious, how this is something that they have really struggled with and they're not really sure how to deal with this. And we had two members of the team who said that they had also struggled with this and they would really like to put together a workbook. And I've just seen how they've really ground this one out, you know, over the course of like four or six weeks, putting this all together, the writing and designing this beautiful workbook and it's really such a massive achievement for them and also for us as a business and we're really looking forward to releasing that. That's a recent achievement. Something where you feel like, oh, I really had to work for that. Question number five, how would you further Nestle? I love this question. So how can you further any company? Well, could you think of new products? Could you make them more efficient? Could you figure out a new channel where they can sell things. So predominantly, businesses only really grow through two strategies, which is channel-led growth and product-led growth. So product-led growth is based around the product, people use the product and then tell other people about the product and they use the product and things become viral. TikTok is a really good example of that. So people use TikTok and they're like, oh my God, are you on TikTok? Um, Channel-led growth is more to do with, it could be content strategy through LinkedIn, through YouTube, through TikTok, through Twitter, through Facebook, through um, direct sales calling, through direct mail that gets sent out to people's posts. So when thinking about how would you further Nestle, I would think about this like, what's a product that you really love and how would you sell more of that product? Would you release a different variety of that product? Would you do a special offer on it? Would you change the branding, change the packaging? I think this is a great question that you can use to be really creative and think about how you could strategize and help Nestle to become bigger and better. So here are five other questions which we came across which we really loved. So we're gonna move through this in a rapid fire round. What assets would you bring to the team? Love this. It's basically what skills would you bring? And I think this is a good opportunity to share who you are personally. So for example, for me, I could be very straight down the middle and also I'm quite quirky. I'm a bit of a goof, to be honest. Um, question two, what is your greatest learning to date? I love this. What's your biggest life lesson? What's the one thing, if you could only teach one thing that you would teach someone else, which has had a massive impact on your life? Question number three, how do you stay motivated at work? So this is really thinking about, you know, a lot of people sort of say, oh, you know, I'm really excited to work. I mean, that's quite different when you're working nine to five, Monday to Friday, and it can be a little bit of a grind. So how do you stay motivated? Well, I'd want to learn, I'd want to achieve, I'd want to set myself targets, deadlines. Um, I was talking to Danny the other day, and she was like, well, I try and see if I can do things faster. So I time myself and see if I can do it better. I just make it into a little game. Uh, question number four, what is your daily routine like? I love this question. When you know about someone's daily routine, I think it really says a lot about them. So for example, for me, I try and be up at five, 5.30 in the morning. I like to be in the office by six because I like to get things done. For example, this morning I'm filming YouTube videos. Um, and actually that carries through into the weekend. I found that over time that if I can get a big chunk of work done before 12, which tends to be my maker schedule, or my creative schedule, then in the afternoon when I'm feeling a bit more tired, a bit more fatigued, then I might have a workout, I might do my admin or speak, take client meetings, that sort of thing. So it's a little bit less creative work. Um, question five, love this question. What has been your greatest defeat? Um, 
for me, this might have been like your biggest mistake, something that's really taught you a massive life lesson. I always urge people to be super honest about this. I find that the more honest, the more truthful, the more vulnerable you are, the better that you are. For me, it came at the age of 24 when I realized that I had a real problem with drugs and alcohol and I decided to do something about it and to admit defeat and say, look, this is not something I can really do anymore. And it turned into one of my greatest victories, which was getting sober. But for you, it could be something different. But when I find that I'm really honest and vulnerable about something, I find that people respond to me really well and it allows them to be honest and vulnerable. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you need more help with this, you can get this research note, courses, templates, handouts, and sample answers in the past the interview pack down in the description below. Have you got an interview coming up? Have you done your interview? Was this helpful? Let us know in the comments. What other videos would you like us to do? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I wish you the best of luck. See you later.